Wayne, you're, you're almost through your first season at Shells. Uh, how have you found the challenge so far? Um, at the start, I wasn't sure what way it'd be, to be honest. Um, when I come in from Blancford myself, it was totally different. Um, the club itself, I feel, is a, a great a great opportunity for young kids now to come and play. Um, but I really feel strongly that most of the other clubs are just taking all the players to stop them going to other clubs and that young players are just making mistakes in the sense of they're not really going to ever play first team football there, is my opinion. A club like this, the situation that the club is in, rightly or wrongly, is why I think it's a better place to come all the way through in. I think there's more chances for 17, 18, 19 year olds to break through here than there would be on most other clubs, um, to be honest with you. And uh, coming from, from Longford, as you said, is there much difference in the, in the club setup and the structures here at Shells? You know, what would the main changes be that you've seen compared to Longford? Um, there's, there's not really much as in changes of stuff. To be fair to, to Longford, they would do a lot, a lot of stuff that we would do. Um, we just have, we fight for a bigger base. They fight against the GAA down there and, and pool the players. Where we fight for the pool of players against all the other teams. Is it different in the sense? Probably not. They train in Dublin, we train in Dublin, except the Night Danes will train down in Longford. Um, the facilities here, if I'm being honest, would probably be a lot better for the Night Danes. Um, but the, for what the first teams would get would probably be the same, you know. Okay, we're, we're heading towards sort of the, the latter part of the season now. How would you assess how it's gone so far this year? It's been very stop start, and not to make ex not to make um, excuses of it. A lot of it is to do with the breaks we're in the season and keeping the, the lads motivated through the season. For instance, like we'd a really really good run of games where we won a lot of games. We went we went to Finn Harps and won. We went to Derry and won. Not many people will go there and win because they're tough places to travel to and go to. Like after the Derry game, like we wouldn't have played for three weeks. Um, after the Finn Harps game, there's breaks, um, and that's probably the biggest challenge I found. If I'm being honest. Yeah, and how would you deal with that? You know, trying to get the players back focused it's again. It's very difficult because the players know that there's a break coming, and all of a sudden, then they know they've a weekend where they can go out with their friends and all that. And at the end of the day, they are young young men as well, and they have to have lives. But that's the biggest challenge, if I'm being honest. Sure. Um, yeah, all of that's that's the biggest challenge for yeah. for keeping everybody motivated, keeping them wanting to play, keeping them focused on their goals that they've set from the start. That's the biggest challenge, you know. Yeah, and have preparations started yourself already for twenty eighteen? Is there anything underway? Are any thoughts? What's what's coming down the line? Well, with the influx now, in fairness to Stephen Finn, who has been brilliant since I've come in. Any player, every player that steps up into the seven from the seven days. Of took I think to seven and possibly another three or four more so with the future being that six or seven of them will eventually step forward into the 19s full time obviously I've all, have already started um, and then to be honest with you we've got not as many as we would need we'll need the influx on the bottom end of it to fill, fill that void again for them um, and that's sorry that's where I feel that that's where I feel that it's a great opportunity. You know, you've got a 17s manager who wants to push the players through to the 19s, and you've got a 19s manager who wants to push them through to the 14s. You mentioned Stephen Finn there with the under 17s. Now, the club itself has, has had its problems in recent years off the field and so on, but one of the really positive things is the academy is really, you know, structured well under 19s, under 17s, under 15s coming on board now in the next couple of weeks. Um, overall, it's been a fairly tremendous success. But how do you, Stephen, and then the under under 15s team with Conor Mitchell, how do you all come together to keep that going and to not just keep it going but to push it on? To be honest, I would deal with just with Stephen, and Stephen then will deal with Conor that's in with the 15s and Paul Fogarty. Um, and they, you don't have this massive meeting where you all meet each other. They push on the players that they think is good enough. Stephen will go and watch them. So it's not for safe for me. Uh, to be honest, I was with the DDSL last year, the Kennedy Cup age group. So the 15s that's coming in, 
we've a great idea of what the 15s are, yeah. but you have to trust in Connor and Paul to do what they feel is right at the 15s level. And then they will bring the best players into Stephen, and then Stephen will then push them up to me. Yeah, there's a, there's a, there is a big challenge, especially in Dublin, with you know the younger lads sort of as they come into their teens, 14, mid teens, 15. Shells, as you, as you mentioned, have a lot of competition for these young guys. And uh, in your view, you know what what can, you know what's unique about this club? What can what would you say to a young guy, his parents, about what the club can offer? You know, and why should they con consider coming to Shells? If it was me, you know, I was playing again. And I was brutal when I was a player, to be honest. But if it was me, I would, because ultimately I want to play first team football. And that's the goal. There's a lot of the Premier Division teams that have excellent facilities, excellent coaches, but because the pool is so big, the, the, the chances of them actually getting into first teams is not as highly as it is here. Realistically, this club doesn't have the resources that some of the other teams do have. So, in my mind, genuinely, it's common sense. Shells don't have the resources to pump in and go out and buy somebody for X amount of money. So, we need the youth. But yet, we wouldn't be as high up on the youth's list because we're not attractive enough, because we don't have this or that or whatever it may be. And if I was starting again, genuinely, I'd be looking at, around at the first division clubs, particularly in the likes of Dublin. And yeah. this one would be the biggest one. Yeah. In finer detail on, on that point, you know, is, is there a genuine career path progression in place for players, do you think? Yeah, well, look, what we've done now with the 19s in this, this small period of time is we've changed. We've only won 1998 in our squad at the moment. So we only lose one player next year. So that's a big thing for us. So then these players, and I really firmly believe this, if they stay together, within the two years period that they'll get, you will get an influx of five or six good players stepping forward into the first team. It's a huge gap even then from 19s to first team. Purely physical at the moment. Um, most of the lads will be very technically very good, um, bright, uh, v great awareness, but physically you have a 28 year old man against a 7, 18 year old young man who actually thinks he's stronger than he is. You know, and that's that's the big challenge, you know what I'm saying? That's, for me, the only bit where the pathway sort of steps down. We've got 198, uh, Ross Coyle, and if he doesn't make it here, there's nowhere sort of for him to go, only lens of senior football. And that's probably the sad thing in that we've been catered now for the 15s, we catered the 17s, we catered the 19s, but there's no better experience than three or four first team players coming down and playing senior senior football with 19 year olds and showing them how to play games yeah. you know on the pitch rather than the coach me or whoever it may be mm -hmm. trying to talk them through a game and they're like well you don't have to make that run or you don't have to do that or you don't have to pl make the decisions for me when you've got experienced pros who play first division football or premier division football that can help them i think yeah. That's ultimately where the pathway fails for me, to be honest. Yeah, we've seen Aaron Malloy. He's been, yeah. he's, 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 you know, dabbled in the first team this year, and he certainly hasn't looked out of place. Yeah. Uh, Mikey Murphy. Yeah. You know, he sort of seem, fits in seamlessly, and we know he's been uh, dropping up and down between yeah. both teams. Uh, have they, in particular, had a good effect on the rest of the squad? Yeah, v very good. Aaron Malloy is a born leader, to be totally honest. Um, from the day I met him, from the day I met him in here, um, he's a born leader. He needs to improve technically, which I've spoke to him about. Um, and Mikey, when I watch Mikey playing sometimes, he actually looks physically like a man rather than some of the other players. Um, he's bright, he's intelligent, he's got, you know, he's got all the chances to be whatever Mikey wants to be in the two of them. You've also had, from last year, you've got Dale, you've got Dylan, you know, you've got James, who's now up there. So, like, the pathway through, it's clear to see, even before I've come here, that, that there's, four, three, there's five lads in six months, you know what I mean? And they're regular starters now, you know what I mean? They're not just coming up and making up the numbers, or they're on the bench, they're making up the numbers. And one of the things we did, myself and Owen was, to be honest with you, was to give more time and effort to the ones below, we took them off the 19th squad. 
So like they're first team players now. They just concentrate on the first team. They they don't have to worry about coming up and down. Mikey and Aaron will stay with us um, until them because Aaron has only really gone up. But the rest of them is you know they're doing playing the trade here and hopefully they make a career for themselves. You know. Yeah, they certainly fit in very well. Just taking a step back a couple of weeks, we had Cliftonville here for friendly, and on that occasion we had. As you said, a couple of the under-19s guys can kind of run out. Now, the result apart, which wasn't, you know, yeah. ready for discussion, how did you think the guys fitted in that day? I know it was a bit of a chopping and changing, but you were on the bench up close seeing how they, how Mo they reacted. Most of them were seven days. Most of them that came up were all seven days. So, left back to come on, Peter, Luke Ring, Ringo, um, centre-half who started. Sean Trimble is only, he's been with us a while now, he's a 99. Um, people have played in that game. They were only seven days that came up. So they, like, that's the point I'm, I'm really trying to get across here in the sense of, I didn't hide them from Owen and say, oh, I want to keep them for the ninth days and we're going to build something here. Uh, he's like, Luke Ring's father said, are you sure he's ready? I said, well, we'll only going to find out when I'm playing against good teams. And okay, yeah, we, we, the result wasn't great. But what the experiences that they will get for that is, you can put into anything. You like all the training sessions, all the coaching points you want to give across, put a lad into a situation where he's up against lads who are really physical and now you're saying, Well, there's the picture of where you need to be. Yeah. You now see it. That's how hard it is. And actually, with all due respects to Cliftonville, I feel there's better clubs down here would be even better than Cliftonville. So there's even another step. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but it gives them that picture, it gives them that boy, and it gives them that that feeling around this club to make this club good or great again, whatever word you want to use, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Now, as I said, we're sort of coming towards the end of the season, still, still a bit to go. But mm. during the off season now, with yourself, your coaching team, is there any particular f uh, focus or plans you're going to put in place, even off the field, just for the next season? Or have you learned much, such as the breaks in play, or, you know, you know, the, the yeah. gaps in play? Yourself, very, very highly regarded here in you know in Irish circles. You know, are you are you here for the long term? What's your own you know ambitions? You know, what what do you see in the next 2018 and going forward? Well, yeah, the ambition would be obviously would be my first ambition would be the best 19s players, as in the best 98s. I would look to go and ask them to come to this club first and see if there's this pathway through for them. Um, regards to first team football, because there's a lot of clubs just let some of the best. You know, you see games, you see he's very, very good, and then he might not make the grade within the club. Uh, maybe a Premier Division club, and they've had loads of resources, like I spoke about, and all of a sudden that player doesn't really make it anymore. Um, with regards to myself, y you never know. You, you sit down and you speak to the likes of Owen and Joe and see if they're ultimately happy about how things went. This, this year um, and that will be that will be the conversation that would be for them rather than anything else if I'm being honest To finish Wayne you've been very very good with your time um, for young guys out there the parents who might be listening to this you know what, what's and they're interested in getting involved with Shells you know what's the next step do they come and contact you to contact the club how do they actually physically go about getting involved for 2018 uh, Very easily if you're young and you're looking to come, come to the skill boy section first and start to play a trade there in the 7s, 8s, 9s and 10s. If not, go towards the 15s as your first ring meet and then depending on your age. If you're old enough for my age, contact me. You get my number, no problem. And in fairness, the kids are very good in the way they'll Facebook you and they'll find a way to get through to you or they get your number from somebody. There's always somebody that'll get it. Most of the times, most of the numbers are up on the website and stuff like that, so that's no problem. But I really do firmly believe that if you want to play at the highest level in fourth division, come Premier Division football, and you feel like you're going to break all the way through, well then I don't think there's a better place, and I really don't, regardless of whether I'm here or not here. That wouldn't change my opinion of that in the sense of take your shoes off and become a player for a second and look around you and go, yeah, I wear a nice kit. Yeah, I've got a great team. Yeah, I'm top of the Northern Division. I'm top of the Southern Division. We're winning the league. We're brilliant. It comes down to, are you going to play first-team football? 
And that's ultimately what it comes down to. And like what you asked me about the young lads stepping up against Cliftonville, some of them were only up with me a couple of weeks. So it could be a case of, I know I'm not ready, I don't need you, need to put more first team players in. No, let them in, let them play. There's nothing at stake, you know. And then ultimately it'll be up to the player himself to hopefully um, do well and get through it. And that would be what I'd be looking for. Well, Wayne, thanks for all your thoughts today. There's a lot there to digest, um, and there certainly is, you know, real great hope for the future. Things are looking very bright, and we look forward to catching up with you early next season, 2018. Thanks very much. Thanks, buddy. Thank you.